Hello everyone. Welcome to Voice of the Wild, a podcast initiative by Naturalist Foundation. This is the second season episode 7 of the podcast. With this podcast, we bring you closer to the world of wildlife conservation, scientific research and government environmental policy. I am Devolina and today I will be talking about a recent rediscovery of the red coral kukri snake. Also how dams affect our freshwater resources, aquatic life and fisheries in India. And lastly, I will talk about a new way one can reduce COVID's plastic waste by making use of banana tree species to make masks. So without making you all wait, let's get started. Water is one of the most essential resources on earth for all that's living. Apart from marine waters that's almost 90% of the water available on the planet, we have fresh water including rivers, lakes, streams, glaciers and even groundwater. This fresh water is used by humans for various purposes and to provide fresh water for our usage, dams have been built. Through history it shows how dams have irrigated farmland, prevented flooding and generated tremendous amounts of electricity. It is understandable why dams were built in the first place. and they have had some positive outcomes but for long now the negative impacts of dams have been ignored and numbers of these medium or major structures have been on a rise hydropower is the oldest way of generating electricity on earth societies rely on this fresh water for a variety of purposes including drinking water food commerce recreation transportation waste dilution and decomposition when we talk about hydropower We imagine huge wheels spinning with the force of water generating electricity. But nowadays, hydropower includes building of massive dams to hold back a water source instead of wheels on a creek. Electricity can be generated with enough water pressure that can spin giant turbines. The need for food and power to support the growing population and development has made our country one of the most active dam building countries in the world, having about 5202 dams and barrages. out of which 10 are large power generating hydroelectric dams these numbers of dams have been escalating with more being under construction and new projects being approved as we talk they are built especially in the himalayan states of uttarakhand and arunachal pradesh over the two largest river basins in the subcontinent the ganga and the brahmaputra this reveals the lack of studies conducted since there is no answer to how many more dams are even needed to run the whole country Also many dam building projects that are carried out in India are done without any proper environmental analysis. Dams alter waterways in both directions affecting fish and wildlife, forest, farms and human population living nearby. The flowing rivers are home to a diverse species of flora and fauna. Most of these species depend on this natural resource to live and go on with their life cycle. Hence when there is a barrier like a dam the rivers are damaged due to construction and then all the habitats close to it which include a variety of fishes and plants are greatly hampered most of us are aware of the difficulties fishes face during spawning season and migration one of the main life processes in fishes is migration usually to forage and reproduce but migratory fishes like hilsa pangaeus or carps such as rohu and katla are unable to do so because their habitats get fragmented with barriers making it difficult for them to reach their breeding grounds all of this results in biodiversity loss lowered numbers of fish species and natural predators too suffer due to low availability of food the stagnant water in a reservoir gathers more sediments aquatic weeds and algae in a river that would reduce the oxygen levels which is consumed by the growing algae on top and aquatic weeds underneath leaving the fishes with minimum oxygen since fishes are used to a certain temperature and oxygen levels in rivers dams not only block fishes migratory ways but deep reservoirs held by the dams result in cold water and low oxygen levels opening of the reservoirs causes this cold and barely oxygenated water to rush into the river suffocating and killing the fishes along with these visible consequences the water quality of the river is seen to be reducing as sand rocks woods and natural sediments build up in the reservoir rather than settling down on the river bed according to a study published scientists found that large hydroelectric dams emit greenhouse gases something they were not supposed to do as reservoirs behind the dams grow and flood the area nearby the water causes decomposition of vegetation or plants 
in that area, releasing CO2 and methane, two of the most effective greenhouse gases that warm our atmosphere. After analyzing dams, researchers have found that dams emit more amounts of methane than lakes and wetlands. Dams and various developmental projects are seen as symbols of human achievements and nations will have to generate power, but that shouldn't be at the cost of our natural resources. And certainly, no more dams are required. In this time of an ongoing pandemic, it can be observed globally that efforts to ban single-use plastics to lower waste has been slowed down. Even as the environment saw several positive changes due to the lockdowns imposed across the globe to curb the spread of COVID-19, it has resulted in a massive increase in plastic pollution. Since hygiene needs prioritizing in these times, people are using masks, gloves, gowns at a higher rate than ever before and this way environment-friendly choices are not being made. This can have serious outcomes in the near future as solid waste pollution will increase and if data from the past is reliable, it can be expected that around 75% of these used masks, as well as other pandemic-related waste, will end up in landfills or floating in the sea. For this very reason, a new possible idea has been come up with. A fibre from a relative of the banana tree could be used as an alternative to plastic in making face masks and hospital gowns. Abaca, a fibre from the Philippines, unlike most other leaf fibres, is obtained from the plant leaf stalk. It's as durable as polyester, but will decompose within two months. Considering the time the huge amounts of plastic waste would take to decompose, that's made of synthetic fiber, this material could be a better alternative. The abaca is native to the Philippines and the fiber is stripped from the trunks of the tree. Also known as Malilla hemp, the abaca plant is a close relative of the banana plant. It can grow up to 3 meters length and has high tensile strength. Currently, the fibers are made into a pulp and processed into tea bags, sausage casing, fishing line, ropes, and high quality paper. Looking into a few details about the plant, it grows best in fairly rich, loose, loamy soils that have good drainage. Propagation is mainly from the pieces of mature rootstock, usually planted at the start of rainy season. Within 18 to 24 months after planting, two or three of the plant stalks in each mat are ready for harvesting. This shows that the amount of time and effort needed for the plantation and harvesting of the fibre is greater than the need of supply rate in order to meet the consumer demands. Also, the Philippines is the world's largest producer, supplying 85% of the fibre in 2017. Abaca is like precious gold for the Philippines as it is expensive to grow the plant, especially for farmers with limited supplies and money. Also, it's been often overlooked because the government prioritises crops that feed people. We cannot ignore the amount of energy or pollution that goes into making fibre from these plants and then producing masks that would be eco-friendly. Since it's needed worldwide, the production on a large scale could take years before becoming reality and give rise to illegal marketing if needs are not met by companies. Maybe other natural materials can be put to use in order to maintain a balance and not overuse this plant. All of this raises questions of whether this idea is sustainable enough to move forward or if there are enough resources, and many more things to think and plan about before considering this alternative and jumping to a solution. Because it will only truly be sustainable if proper guidelines are followed and efforts are taken to make the production of the goods sustainable. The red coral kukri snake has been spotted in two states, Uttar Pradesh and Uttarakhand, in just two months amid lockdown. The reptile was first sighted in Dunwa National Park in Uttar Pradesh in 1936 and recently on June 28th, after a gap of 82 years. Red coral kukri is a nocturnal, non-venomous reptile feeding on insects and worms. The name kukri comes from the word knife-shaped weapon used to break eggs and given by the Gorkhas. It is known as red coral kukri owing to its red-orange colour and its teeth shaped resembling the curvy sharp end of a knife. It has been listed under Schedule 4 of the Wildlife Protection Act, 1972. Located in the Terai Belt of the marshy grasslands of northern Uttar Pradesh, the Dunwa National Park supports several endangered species. A team of conservationists patrolling southern range of the forest came across a bright orange-coloured, one-metre-long snake clinging to the railway tracks near Sonaripur Railway Station. It attracted the attention of the team as this type of snake was never sighted here before. Earlier in 2014, 
the snake was reported for the first time near Uttar Pradesh border and was captured and stored in a plastic container by the villagers and after being rescued by the forest department team was found to be dead. Then they realized that this was one of the rarest species of snakes. This time the forest department team rescued the snake from the area where they found that the snake could be in danger and released it into the forest. And thus both places where it was found made the forest officials and nature lovers very happy since the species was rediscovered after so long. I hope all of you enjoyed this podcast. We will keep posting such content every week. Please like, share and subscribe or follow us to stay updated. Also please support us on Patreon to show appreciation towards our young team that create and provide such informative content. Link is mentioned in the description. Thank you and see you next time.